LSU's quarterback, Jaden Daniels, has to make a statement versus Nick Saban and the Alabama defense this Saturday. But so does Michael Penix versus Caleb Williams. We're going to talk about this and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always joining Keith Sanchez. We're national scouts as well as... Senior draft analyst from the Draft Network. Keith is a 2019 national champion with the LSU Bengal Tigers, guys. And thank you all so much for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out to you all for being our everydayers. But, Keith, tell the people what's on tap for this Friday, man. Hey, man, well, I want to say welcome to our everydayers, man. On tap, we have our Make a Statement segment. We talked about it, right? This is quarterback play, man. This is a Heisman run right here. We get a Michael Penix versus Caleb Williams showdown, and we get a Jake Daniels versus that vaunted Alabama defense showdown in Tuscaloosa. Then we get our Where You At segment, man. We get to call out the people, right, the players, right, where we thought they were going to perform at a high level, talk about what's wrong, what's going on, and then we're going to finish this thing off with a rookie spotlight. NFL schedule? What rookies have to show up and show out for their NFL teams to make a push and get that win this weekend? Now, nah, that, that's the show, guys. But before we get into that, today's episode has been brought to you by Prize Picks. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the code in all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Keith. When I ask you who needs to make a statement, who's got a lot of money for the 2024 NFL draft riding on this weekend, who comes to mind for you? DP, it is LSU's quarterback, Jaden Daniels, right? Without a doubt, he goes into Tuscaloosa. He gets the win. Man, this guy is going to – his name is going to elevate clearly into Heisman campaign, right? Maybe even a Heisman favorite. But then also you start talking about, hey, if this guy's a proven winner, right, and he can win the big games, then you start talking about, hey, potential second round, maybe back in the first round type of quarterback. So he is definitely, he has, I don't think he has a whole lot to lose, but there's definitely a lot for him to gain by winning this game. A lot of people, and everyone knows I live in LSU country, right? And there's a lot of people tweeting and talking and say, hey, Jay Daniels, the numbers that he's put up, he should be a Heisman favorite. Well, guess what? Here's your moment to go be a Heisman favorite, right? Because you had a big moment at the beginning of the season. And quite frankly, well, against Florida State, right, which is a, a top 10 matchup, didn't mm-hmm. play well. Our LSU team didn't play well. Then you had another loss against Ole Miss where you played well, but the team didn't play well. You bring your team along, right, and the last quarterback to go do it was who? LSU's quarterback Joe Burrow going to Tuscaloosa and get the win. Now you start getting those comparisons of people talking about, hey, this offense is as good at that as that offense, and you start to get Jane Daniels in that conversation. No, I love that, Keith, because like you said, it's about Heisman moments. He's got all the numbers. His defense, similar to Caleb Williams and Drake May, has kind of let him down a lot this year in terms of being able to stay undefeated, different things like that. But I'm, I'm glad you brought Jaden Daniels up, man, because he's got a lot riding on this performance. But you know who's got a lot riding on the performance, Keith? Michael Penix Jr. over with the Washington Huskies. Why? Because, again, he has another Heisman moment. He had his first one against Oregon, right? We even broke down his film over on the Draft Network, the Draft Network's YouTube channel, so go check that out if you like. We broke down his tape versus Oregon. Well, now he's got Caleb Williams, right? And it's not so much the defense he's got to worry about. It's more so dealing with Caleb Williams being able to put up 40 points on his defense, Keith. So now it's a situation where if Bo Nix put up 30 to 33, Caleb Williams can do a lot more than what even what Bo Nix can do from a quarterback and athletic standpoint, making plays with his legs, stuff like that. So Michael Penix, he has to come out here. And again, like the, for Jaden Daniels, he's if he goes out there and dominates versus Alabama, he, he kind of puts himself almost as a Heisman favorite, like you said. But if Michael Penix can go out there and go toe-to-toe, throw-to-throw, punch-for-punch with Caleb Williams and knock off uh, USC, right? That's another notch on his belt, Keith. And I think that'll be enough to keep him at the top. 
but especially after the last two weeks or so since that Oregon game, Michael Penix in this offense kind of, they've had some sputters, right? They haven't looked the greatest, so he needs to bounce back, and there's a lot on, uh, riding on it. But you know what, Keith? Both of these quarterbacks should be on the radar of who we talked about on yesterday's episode, the Las Vegas Raiders, Keith. Both of these quarterbacks need to be on the Raiders' radar because if they don't end up with a pick up there, like inside the top three to be able to go get Drake May or Caleb Williams, you didn't have an opportunity to watch these two young men go out there and ball and maybe snatch a, a Michael Penix Jr. in the first round or even the second round, depends on how the medicals turn out. Or snatch up, like you said, Jaden Daniels, whether it's right there in the top 10 or maybe you trade back up into the, the bottom of the first round and get that get Jaden Daniels and because you need a franchise quarterback. So the Las Vegas Raiders need to keep their eyes peeled on both of our make-a-statement quarterbacks for week what? What is it, week 10? Uh, of the week nine, week ten of the of the college football season, I feel like the college football season is literally almost over. Keith, it's, it's getting close, man. Well, there's four to five weeks left of this college football season, so DP, we got to cherish it, man. And this is a lot of big moments for a lot of big time quarterbacks, and this it's it's huge for these guys because the Heisman race is. I feel like it's still wide open, right? It's kind of yeah. died down. Who's a favorite? Like you see, the last time we had that moment of feeling like a quarterback is a favorite was when Michael Penix beat Oregon, right? And then since then, it's kind of died down and it's went a bunch of different ways. J.J. McCarthy with Michigan, right? But who knows that whole Michigan situation, how that's going to affect J.J. McCarthy's and how, pe how people view J.J. McCarthy, I'm sorry. And so, yes, I think it's wide open and I think it's for the taking. Marvin Harrison Jr., right, inserted himself into that conversation just by having dominant performances against Penn State and Wisconsin, right, and, and week in and week out and showing that he may be pound for pound, right, or position per him the best football player in college football so i'm with you dp i think michael Penix has everything right there at his feet right to really make a make a run at this heisman thing but also does Jaden Daniels, right and this can be a really interesting conversation and we can lead this weekend dp with michael Penix and Jaden daniels fighting one and two for this heisman conversation so they both have big games on taps i think it's going to be really fun with dp man talking about big games talking about players what they say big time players make big time plays and big time moments where you at means we ain't been getting it, right? There's no big-time players making big-time moments, big-time plays and big-time moments. We're going to discuss that because we want to talk about the in-depth conversations that we've had with the where you at players, right? Players we expect them to perform really well and then have simply, honestly, just not had the production. So coming up next, man, we're going to get into that where you at segment. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Guys, with the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports and leagues. For example, LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10 and a half combo for three pointers made plus receptions. Do you want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz? Then you can do that. You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each and every day week. Not only that, guys, but this week on Prospects, I am taking for college football K. Club, the quarterback from Clemson, for less than 230 and a half passing yards versus Notre Dame. So what do you need to do? It's very simple. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Keith, when I think about a prospect when I'm asking where you at? I'm sticking with that USC Washington matchups and that that matchup with defensive end edge rusher Zion Tupuola Fitui Keith Washington with Braylon Trice is still getting in the backfield he's making he's getting his pressures I think he's in like the 20s like he's he's pressuring the quarterback but he's not getting all the sacks that that we expected right but Z for ZTF a guy that we I was really excited to see him healthy ready to rock and roll seeing like okay. What can you do? What you know? What I mean, what type of money are you gonna make yourself this year? Well, I'm not sure what that check's gonna look like, but it, it, it's not great right now, Keith. Only and he started what eight nine games this year. He has eight hurries, two QB hits, no forced fumbles, and only two sacks on the season. So ZTF Zion Tupuola Fetui, where you at, brother? I, we need and then this is a game 
where you're it, you talk about the spotlight. I'm expecting the Pete Thamel from ESPN to talk about man, it's 35 scouts here to see Washington versus USC. So ZTF, that's the moment that you need to shine. I, I don't care about what's happened the rest of this season, the, the beginning of this season, up until this point. You got to show up, man. Because if you go and become Casper the Friendly Ghost for another week and disappear on us. This doesn't help your stock. Your stock will internally be going down and down and down. Nobody's going to buy stock in ZTF as a 2024 NFL edge rusher. You got to come out here and ball. So, like I said, when I looked at those numbers and I'm watching the tape, I'm just like, what is going on? Like, where are you? What you know what I'm saying? You got another dog, literally, you know, pun intended. Y'all are the huskies. You got another dog across the field or across the formation from you, across the alignment in Braylon Trice. You guys supposed to make each other's job easier. You're supposed to collapse the pocket for one another. Feel like Braylon Trice is getting the job done, but I have not seen nowhere near enough from ZTF, somebody I was really high on coming into this season. And DP, with this matchup, right? You this is your type of matchup. You know USC is gonna drop back and throw the football, right? And not only that. Washington's offense should handle their business against USC defense, right? Because USC mm -hmm. defense documented as being not a good defense, right? So you expect that. Now, if you're talking about a dominant performance from Washington, it's going to be because Washington's defense steps up and is able to shut down USC's offense, right? That's the question mark of in this matchup, how would that play out? How would that shake out, DP? And I think if, if you ask me, I I'm going to go with, ZTF showing up, right? Like just playing good football, right? Being able to attack this offensive line. This offensive line is also a weak point of this offense. And then you get to be that guy, DP, when you're talking about those walk-off plays, right? You getting a walk-off sack to shut down the drive, right? A walk-off sack to end the game. So I'm, I'm right there with you that, you know, the, the, the statistics, the production has not been there. And the thing is this, that we have edge rushers continually emerging, right? And there's no consensus, number one, but you would have liked to put your name in that conversation of, hey, maybe somebody's mentioning you as number one, right? I think that's what this conversation is about. So ZTF, I'm right there with you with the way you had said it. DP, you stay with your matchup, right? And your quarterback matchup and your USC Washington matchup. I'm going to stick with my LSU and Bama matchup. This is SEC country, baby. I'm going to stick with it. And I'm going with Alabama corner, Kool-Aid McKinstry, right? Supposed to be the number one cornerback in the nation. Extremely talented, smooth, smooth hips, right? Fluid. You like everything about him. He can play some zone. He can play some man. But simply from a being that dominant corner, right, in the Alabama defense that we've seen in the past from a, a, a Patrick Sertan, your Drake Kirkpatrick, your D Melliners, right? Like when when it when you walk into the season, DP, and you're supposed to be the number one corner for Bama, that means a lot, right? It's a similar thing with being, you know, if you're a top corner for LSU or Ohio State, right? It means that, man, you're probably the best corner in the nation. I don't want to hand that to Kool-Aid McKinstry, right, just because everybody else is not playing well. Everybody else, is that's not your business, right, what Denzel Burke does or what Kelly King does at Penn State, right? You're supposed to separate yourself as, hey, you're a top 10 pick. Because I want to say this, as of now, DP, if, if I tell you that the first corner went 22nd in the draft, that wouldn't be a far-fetched thing, right? You'd be like, I can see a team not want to take a corner to the 22nd overall pick, right? And so for Kool-Aid McKinstry, I want to say, where you're at as far as, hey, you get the matchup with Malik Neighbors. You get to match up with Brian Thomas. You've seen him last year, right? You get to match up with him. Y'all get to go at it. You're going to make some plays. You know one thing, DP, and I'll say this, and this is Jake Daniels' conversation. He likes throwing the deep ball to those guys, right? Make them plays. Hey, say, hey, guess what? You test me. That's the interception going the other way. Now you make Jane Daniels hesitant to throw those slot fades or throw those footballs and because he's afraid of the turnover. So you can really make the impact plays that help this entire defense. I haven't seen it yet. He's playing solid football, but I want you to make reach that next level and be high level football because I thought you were cornerback one coming into the season. And that, that's a great name pull, Keith, because while his numbers look good, to your point, this is a matchup where we need to see you. We need to typically what, what's the old phrase, you know, DP defensively. If a corner's not getting his name called, that's a good thing because they ain't targeting you, right? They're not going after you. Oh, you go, you're gonna see some targets in this matchup, Kool-Aid. So we're gonna need you to not be like we, we don't need to wake up and come back Sunday morning and Saturday uh, and Monday morning, like, man, where was Kool-Aid on Saturday, man? No, we need to be like, hey, Kool-Aid showed himself at CB1. And I love the fact that you pointed out. Yes, right now, if a if a corner the first cornerback came off the board in the in the mid twenties, nobody would blink an eye because everybody's looking at it like, well, the, 
there, there hasn't been a lot of buzz around the cornerbacks in terms of who's number one. And this is a game where, you know, cool, this could have been the make a statement segment for Kool-Aid. You got to go out there and prove, right? Make that statement and tell us where you're at and, and, and showcase why you are CB1 because Denzel Burke is playing good football, right? You got Mike Sandstro over at, at, at uh, Michigan, who was the former wide receiver that flipped over to defense, who's playing really good football, right? Kalen King has played good football this season. Cooper Dijon at Iowa. There's a lot of cornerbacks in this class, and what you need to do, Kool-Aid, is just separate yourself and tell everybody there's no chance that any of these guys are better than me. And I think that matchup, like you said, that slot fade, right? LSU loves to isolate that route and go, and go for the chunk play, go for the, and generate the explosive plays. And for Kool-Aid, listen, you know you're going to see Malik Neighbors. You know you're going to see Brian Thomas Jr. So if that's the case, and you should want to, right? Even if they move those guys away from you and they put them in the slot, you should tell Nick Saban, I want that matchup. Put me in the slot man-to-man. -man. And if they go single high and they leave you on the island, can you handle the job? I think that he can. But this is a very difficult task. And this time, we're going to wake up here, like I said, Sunday morning, right? Get ready for some NFL football. I'm going to have to, I'm going to be able to text you, Keith. Say, hey, man, it's either going to be Kool Aid showed up or, man, Kool Aid Island ain't, ain't a real thing no more, Keith. <laughs> no, I'm right there with you, DP. And, and even keeping this this narrative right with just the, 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 the where you at, right? And I want to talk about USC's wide receiver, right? I want to go to Brendan Rice, right? Listen, this team is reeling right now. At the end of the day, right, y'all thought y'all had national championship hopes. Your team is reeling right now. Caleb Williams' number one wide receiver is is Taj Washington, right? The, the, the five seven five eight explosive vertical wide receiver down the field. Brendan Rice, you're six foot, you're six one, you're six two, right? Like be that, be that go-to guy to it. When everything goes wrong, you know what? You can still just go to me. Or you know what? If everything goes right and you just simply call a slant play on third and three, you can go to me because I really like some of the things that I see from him on film. It's just a matter of putting the rest of the picture together on film, right? It's, it, you can watch the movement skills and say, okay, this, this is a smooth route winner. He appears to have good hands. You know, he can make contested catches, but I want you to do that in the high level moments, right? Just so I can say, okay, hey, I trust this guy as a number two wide receiver in the NFL, right? I trust him to, you know, compliment a Stephon Diggs, right? Or, or you know, one of these other high level wide receivers that need a, needs a running mate in the NFL. So I want to put that spot like two legends where you're at just Brendan Rice too, elevating yourself, man. You got a Heisman winner throwing you the football. Who knows who's going to be throwing you the football in the NFL, right? Take advantage of this, right? Take advantage that you have a high-level quarterback throwing you the football. So that's the other guy DP I wanted to bring up was Brendan Rice for USC. No, I like that a lot, Keith, because, again, he has the size. He's got the, the, the bloodlines. We need to come, We need to see you come out there and dominate, man. And we know with Washington, with, with Michael Penix when they seen Oregon, right? How many Michael Penix, what, threw two touchdowns to Roma Dunze, right? Like, and then the game winner was, what, a one-on-one? -on -one? Hey, Go make the play. I'm going to give you the chance to go make the play, make the play. So, you know, Washington is going to do that, right? And you, he has a – where you at? He has the opportunity to elevate his draft stock, right, battling with those guys. And it's not – you're not – obviously, you're not playing against them, right? But they score, make a big play, and then it's like, oh, man, Brendan Rice is making a big play also. And like I said, I'm putting that on his shoulders just because I like some of the things that I see from him on film. I just want him to put the high-level moments together so he can elevate his draft stock and put himself double DP. Man, we, we, we put the, the college prospects on spotlight. Now it's time to put those NFL prospects on spotlight. I think this is one of the better NFL weekends when we talk about matchups. Still don't understand how the Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins end up at 8 o'clock in Germany. I don't get it, but you know, we're going we gonna to leave it alone. We still have a couple high-level matchups. Then we got the Cowboys and Eagles at 3 o'clock. I thought that would be the 7 o'clock game, but we're going to leave well enough alone. Well enough alone, DP. So coming up next, man, we're going to talk about the rookie spotlights. What rookies need to perform well to help their team win this weekend? Why would you want to root for your team on an empty stomach? Guys, order on DoorDash and save on football watch party favorites. Guys, I live in the Greenville County area of South Carolina, and one of my favorite places to get dessert from after a great meal is the Cheesecake Factory, right? Yes, they have other th other menu items, but I love their cheesecake, and so do my wife, right? You're talking about peanut butter, uh, Reese's Cup, chocolate, red velvet, all of it. They have an assortment 
right? An assortment of flavors that you will love. And if you're in the Greenville, South Carolina area, you can order them on DoorDash and have it delivered directly to your front door, okay? But not only that, guys, you can get your watch party favorites. You can order pizza, wings, soda, burgers, or even just the buns if that's the necessary thing that you need, right? And like I said, just like with the Cheesecake Factory, DoorDash will drop all of this off and get it delivered without missing a moment of the game and it's delivered right to your front door. All you need to do is get a 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. You download the DoorDash app and enter the code LOCK23. Rookie spotlight is shining, Keith. And I'm going to Cleveland. I'm going to the Cleveland Browns. And after the, the trade of Donovan Peoples-Jones to the Detroit Lions, you know what that made me feel like and made me think about? That we might start seeing a little bit more of Cedric Tillman in this receiving court, Keith. And I feel like we should. And here's why. When you look at the Cleveland Browns' all, like offensive production for receiving, we all know the stud that Amari Cooper is, right? 30 receptions off of 54 targets. Now all the targets aren't the most accurate because he hasn't had the, the best quarterback on the team because he's been hurt, Deshaun Watson. But he has 478 yards receiving, one touchdown. He's averaging 16 yards per catch. The next player on the team in terms of uh, receptions and yards is David Njoku. 28, recept 28 receptions, one touchdown, around 10 and a half yards per catch, and 293 yards. They don't have anybody else over 300 yards receiving right now. And like I said, Donovan Peoples Jones, he had 18, he had 17, he had 17 targets, eight catches, 97 yards. He didn't even have 100 yards on the season. So I'm expecting Cedric Tillman looked really good in the preseason. Talking about route running, body control, contested catch ability, and being a big body, uh, talented athletic weapon on the outside where I think his ceiling is higher of what we would see from a DPJ. So I think with that trade, I, I, I also this team that wants to run the ball, right? Mark Cooper is going to be your, 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 your number one regardless. But bringing uh, Cedric Tillman, who's also a big, physical, strong body receiver, he can block as well, Keith. So I think he can help you in the run game, but then get some isolated shots. I'm shining that spotlight bright on Cedric Tillman, who's one of my favorite wide receivers coming out of Tennessee. Everybody else loves Jalen Hyatt, and I get it. Speed is sexy. But before he got hurt, you know what I'm saying, at Tennessee, this young man was an absolute baller. So for me, I think that this, and going up against the Arizona Cardinals, uh, secondary that's young, right? Keytrail Clark, Garrett Williams, two rookies, okay? They're a young secondary. You can take advantage of that right now. And then they, they play Clayton Toon and start him on the whole game. You might have a lot of opportunities to throw the football. So I'm just saying, you might have a lot of opportunities with the football. I'm hoping to see Cedric Tillman get more burn and more run in this offense and get more targets as well. I, I like that, DP, and I think that Cedric Tillman, right, we're talking about this healthy Browns receiver core, and you talk about not only Amari Cooper, but you talk about Elijah Moore, you mentioned David Njuku, right? He has a chance to be put in situations where he have advantageous matchups, right? We're not asking you to be the number one. We sometimes you're not even asking you to be the number two wide receiver, right? right? So, so he, he has the opportunity to be put in place to make some plays. So I really like that Cedric Tillman call out DP as the Browns try to continue this playoff run, right? And the Bengals are getting hot. So y'all need to, to keep this thing going. You want to keep the Pittsburgh Steelers as the worst team in the division, right? Or, or try to keep them at, at that situation. But DP, let's I'm I'm gonna go to the Chargers and I'm gonna go back to Quentin Johnston, right? He had a little bit of an uptick in production, right? It, it seemed like they finally try to get him the football, right? Like find creative ways to get the football in his hands when you watch football last weekend. So they're playing the New York Jets, right? And Chargers, listen, y'all y'all almost, I don't say y'all almost out of this thing, right? But it just doesn't look good, right? You, what, for what this roster, if you put the, the Los Angeles Chargers roster on a piece of paper, say, man, they should be one of the best teams, right? Like we should be talking about them in the same breath as we should be talking about uh, um, a, a Kansas City Chiefs or a Miami Dolphins or Buffalo Bills. But it seems like we've accepted only talking about them as a second or third tier team. And that shouldn't be the case. So I want to talk about Quentin Johnston because y'all need to win some more games. Like, listen, I get it. You're playing the New York Jets with a great defense. You're still supposed to win that game, right? The New York Jets have Zach Wilson. You're still supposed to win that game. You have Khalil Mack. You have Bosa, right? You have some other playmakers on the back end of this deep. You have Derwin James, right? So you're still supposed to win this game. I think they're going to have to win this game. Obviously, I know Josh Palmer was injured a little bit, but I think he came back to play. I think he's healthy, DP. He's on my fantasy team. I'm hoping he's healthy. Um, but, you know, you can't just force feed Kenan Allen. You know they're going to focus on him. This is a Quentin Johnston 
big play game. This is him taking off the top, run past Sauce Gardner, run past DJ Reed, right? One past one of these safeties. And you we need the big play from Quentin Johnson. So that's one of my rookie spotlight guys. Keith, I love that name, Paul, because I'm, I'm going to tell you some facts here about this receiving core, right? Quentin Johnson, in terms of targets, is fifth on the team in targets. And remember, he's barely played and barely gotten targeted. He's only been targeted 20 times on the season, right? But he has 12 catches, and then he's sixth on the team in receiving yards with 114. Now, Austin Eckler's at 178. He's the fourth in terms of receiving yards. Gerald Everett, who's a starting tight end, he has 149, so he's fifth in receiving. And you got Mike Williams at third, who's out for the rest of the season, only played three games, and then you got Josh Palmer. What I, uh, what I, and I love this because with Sauce Gardner and, and DJ Reed, right? This is a situation for me, Keith, where I go to 11 personnel, I'm putting Quentin Johnson in the slot. I want him up against their nickel, right? So you want to put your two top guys who don't move and don't move around? Cool. Keenan, I'll put Keenan on the, which Keenan plays a lot in the slot too, but Keenan can play outside. I'll get, I want to get Keenan matched up with Sauce Gardner, right? I want to get uh, DJ Reed matched up with Josh Palmer. And I want to find that that mismatch of whether it's this, whether it's Derwin James or safety, not Derwin James, I'm sorry, but whether it's, uh, I forget their safety's name for, for New York, for the Jets, but whether it's one of their safeties or their nickel corner, I want Quentin Johnston one-on-one and I want to get some, some explosive shot plays going, but also the quick game because we know if there's one thing the Jets defense can do, they got a lot of pass rushes. So they can get it after the quarterback, right? So get the ball out of his hands quickly. And we saw that, I think it was like a, a cross, a, a shallow cross. They He dumped it off right to uh, QJ. QJ caught it, sized up his two defenders, made a miss, spin off another guy, got the first down. And it's like, I'm hoping Justin Herbert in his mind is like, wow. All right, so this is what we've been missing. You yeah, should I'm probably target this guy more. Or sick also too, right? It's like, you know what? Because I know the commentators talked about, oh, he may not know all the players because he was, a, you know, stagnant alignment. He may, you know, majority lined up on one side of the field at TCU. Listen, throw him a quick screen, right? Get the football in his hands. Like, if we, we learn, if we're worried about this guy as an athlete, learning every single thing, that's not how coaching goes. Listen, yeah, I'll, I'll worry about that. We'll take this week by week. But this week, we're going to find this way to get the football in your hands. I think last week they finally started to do it, and you've seen the type of athlete he was, and you've seen the type of mismatch he was with the ball in his hands, that he's just physically bigger than a lot of other cornerbacks, right? And they don't necessarily want to tackle him. And he has the athletic profile to run past defenders too. But DP, man, that wraps up another show, another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast with your dynamic duo, Keith Sanchez, Damian Parsons. Keith Sanchez, myself, you can find me on Twitter at the talent code DP, Damian Parsons. You can find him on Twitter at D underscore NFL, man. Y'all come talk to us because we like to talk back. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank y'all for making Locked on NFL Draft your first listen today and every day, Monday through Friday, guys. Thank y'all so much for tapping in with us. Like he said, talk to us because we do talk back. Come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.